Hey guys, let's talk about a few cards and their current prices to see where Commander 2017 will head. Remember, in this case, singles isn't probably the way you want to go. If you have any interest in dragons, vampires, wizards, just buy the deck. Just buy the deck. Um, there's no other reason to buy singles because I think you want the entire deck because they go well together and they give you options. And if you're buying a $17 single, not the best scenario because the entire deck is probably online will probably cost half that much or double that. So you get so many more cards and those cards will go into the theme quite well. So Commander 2017 has been impressive. I have been very happy with it on my end. I think it's a very strong set. It's a very fun set. The cards are unique and I don't see them deteriorating in value. Now the print run is a big issue. I think the print run in 2016 was not as good as it, it was too much. No, it was too little. Sorry, it was too little. 2015, it was too much. 2016, it was too little. Hopefully they can hit the right market. And remember, if your stores are charging you different prices per deck, you can always go to Walmart or Target. Toys R Us charges more, but you can always find the decks because no one buys them at Toys R Us. Uh, Barnes & Nobles charges you about MSRP as well, the same as Walmart, but they tend to not have as much inventory I don't know if people are buying them or because they just don't have that many stock. But every time I go to Barnes & Noble, it's not a place where it has a wide selection. Walmart, when they're stocking, they actually stock all of them equally. It's just a matter of who's buying them. Target, you, you tend to see less. I think Walmart, there's a better chance of Target. Barnes & Noble, there's a better chance of Walmart or Target. And then if you have to, Toys R Us always has them. They're just more expensive than regular ones. So the prices on them are pretty insane. Edgar Markov, which is the person who made Soren, his sire. I don't know what that means, but okay. And he ten he is the most expensive vampire in the set. One of my gut feeling is do not break if you buy a deck and someone offers you to trade to for Edgar Markov, although it seems extremely valuable, do not trade him away. Just keep the deck like it's supposed to be kept. And you can make you can make uh, changes to the deck, but you can always go back. Because it's going to be really hard to replace some of these cards, and that's what we found with EDH and Commander, is once you sell the most expensive card, unless it's worth more than the deck or very close to the deck, you're not going to get it back at a good price when you need it. By definition, if someone wants you know just this one card in a deck, you really have to not you really have to understand that you don't want to use it in the future, which is hard to predict. So I just say keep the deck together. Here is another legendary vampire at the 1299. The European price is always kind of strange. They're more reasonable in my opinion. I think the market in the U.S. is more buyouts. Sometimes when a buyout happens in the U.S., it has absolutely no impact in Europe whatsoever. From the initial price prices, the Vampire deck is the most expensive of the bunch, the Cat deck being the least expensive of the bunch, the Dragon deck and the Wizard deck being somewhere in the middle. If I had to guess based on how popular the tribes are, vampires are an incredibly popular tribe and now they get more support. I would assume the vampire deck will be the deck most wanted. So normally what happens out of four decks, one deck will be really wanted, the two decks will be in the middle, and then one deck will be the least wanted. I'm basing this on what I see in prices. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the most wanted deck will be the vampires. Then the two in the middle will be the dragons and wizards. And the least wanted deck will be the cats. Now the people who want the cat deck will really want the cat deck, but there can't be that many of them. I mean, 
I like the cat deck, don't get me wrong. I like the cat deck. I'm not a fan of the wizard deck. I would rank it this way. I would put the vampires and then the uh, dragons, cats, and then wizards. But I don't. I think people are going to want the wizards, especially the new snapcaster mage, which is very, very good. The cats are just kind of out there, really. But overall, you can't go wrong. I would probably encourage you to buy one of each, keep them all intact, and then play against each other because they seem very balanced. They seem very balanced and they seem all very unique. Eminence is a very, very good. It's creative and it does what I would want it to do in EDH, giving you benefit even before you play the commander, which is great. Would I recommend buying this set? Yes, I would recommend buying it. I definitely would say that long term there is value because the cards are unique. What happened with M2015, not M2015, Commander 2015, was the cards were not that unique. They were all kind of met to me. I felt it was much weaker. In 2016, it was a great change. The cards were much more unique. Uh, they felt like the token, four color. I mean, that's what it was, right? It's four colors. You never see four colors, right? And therefore, by definition, they're, they are unique because they're not tri-colors or bi-colors. They're four colors or five colors even. And that's why they did so well. They were very strong. These ones, I like the vampire one a lot. I think the vampire one is the strongest as a set overall or as a deck overall. Next, I would say the dragon one. Uh, they solved the problem of dragons being way too expensive is your dragon lord your, will have eminence and make all your dragons cheaper, which is good. They also solved the problem of the dragons being like very easy to remove because they have entered the play abilities. And here's Scion, the, your dragon. I just wanted to make a mention of this card. This card used to be really expensive. I have a few copies of it. I think it was over $10 at one point in time. You always have the risk of, hey, this is going to be reprinted in an EDH dragon deck that everyone's going to buy. That's what happened to Gisela. Gisela was the white red angel, and now she's ticking up slowly in price, but it takes a long time. This is my favorite speculation. Is it going to be $6? I don't think so. I think it's going to drop to 2 to $3. This is a fantastic speculation at two to three dollars assuming it drops there right right now it's about six dollars three dollars in europe but it's it's cannot it's not gonna hold this price there's too many there's too much in the dragon deck so this would be my favorite speculation i would definitely if it hits two dollars wow it's like auto spec right it's something that is just it cannot be two dollars the next one i want to talk about is this one scourge it is a reprint from M15. It is a, mm, was it M15, M14, something like that. I remember having it pre-released, but I couldn't play it because there's triple red. And I was like mono blue. So I was like, yeah. It was my only mythic too. This card is interesting because this is going to go straight down to bulk. But it does not deserve to be bulk. It's a very strong card. It's a card that most dragon... That's why Dragon Tempest. If you think about Dragon Tempest, I don't believe it's reprinted yet. This with Dragon Tempest is absolutely bonkers insane. And Dragon Tempest has been going up steadily in price. You know, I would look at Dragons of Tarkir. I would figure out which dragons would belong in this deck. You have time. The good thing about EDH is it takes like a month. Even if like everyone's like, oh, man, this deck, this Dragon Lord... Blank Blank is amazing in this deck. It's still going to take about a month for him to go up in price. I'm not sure why this is the case, but it is the case. I guess EDH play... Because it probably it's natural growth. It's probably not buyouting, right? And it naturally just takes time for people to be like, Oh, I need this singleton card. Let me buy one copy of this card. Instead of standard and modern. So the good thing about EDH... You don't have that many people trying to buy out. It's more casual. I mean, sometimes you do have EDH buyouts, but a lot you get a lot more in modern and standard because liquidity. When you buy out a card in modern standard, you could probably move four of them, right, as a playset. 
it's very uncommon that you maybe a legendary creature of some type but even then you can sell them by four by four but in EDH, you're selling them one by one, so you're sitting on them for a long time. Each customer is buying one copy only because they're casual. So I like it. I like the dragon deck. If I had to guess, I would say your the Scion dragon will, is going to hit 2 to $3, and that would be a great buy. And the Scourge will hit like a dollar, maybe $0.75, cents, and that would be a fantastic buy. But good decks. I just think they're very strong. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.